I set out to copy a ZTT build to see if I could actually make a profit. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to figure out if or how much money I might have made. For those of you that don't know, Zach's Tech Turf has a huge channel over here on YouTube. He does all kind of things in the gaming PC world, and one of the things he's most famous for is his Flipping Friday playlist and his aesthetics over everything mindset. He loves to make his PCs look super good and super clean. A few months ago, he posted about a white PC build that I absolutely love, and it was a great opportunity for me to see if I could turn a profit because I myself also like to flip PCs. Now, with copying a build like these and using used parts, it's really hard to copy it exactly the same way because you might not be able to get stuff in the price range the same way that he did. So our list of parts slightly vary in the CPU, the case, and maybe the RAM models just a little bit. I'm Matt, and press that subscribe button if you want to build PCs on a budget. Now, let's talk about the parts that we put in our PC. From Facebook Marketplace, we found a deal for $135 that included this Ryzen 3600X and this B450 motherboard. To cool the CPU, we chose this white cooler from ID Cooling that was about 20 bucks, and they're like that every day on Amazon. For the RAM, we chose this white Team Force 16 gigabyte kit that also has RGB. We paid 45 bucks for it. For an SSD, we paid 30 bucks for an NVMe that we found on Amazon. The power supply cost me 50 bucks. I got a great deal on it from following ZTT's Discord. This 550 watt thermal take power supply. For the graphics card, everybody's favorite part, we had this 1060 6 gigabyte version in white from Asus that we got for $98 on eBay. And we're going to put it in this very nice, beautiful Montec Air 1000 case that come with pre-installed RGB fans. Altogether, this build cost us around $450. Let's see what kind of games it can play. In everyone's favorite Battle Royale, we played good old Fork Knife. We played it in two different settings. First up, on performance mode at 1080p, we put the view distance on epic and the textures on like medium. This is more of a competitive experience and it seems to make the game run a little bit smoother as long as you have a decent CPU. We got anywhere from like 160 to like 230 FPS. It seemed to stay in the 170s to 180s most of the time with some jumps up and down as Fortnite typically does because it's Fortnite. Then we tried it again in DirectX 11. We put everything turned off mostly, except for the view distance and the textures. So it's very similar to performance mode, but it stresses out the GPU just a little bit more. And in this mode, we typically got anywhere from like 120 to 170, so slightly lower, but it looks a little prettier. So it's totally up to you on whichever one you prefer. The next couple of games were a little bit less demanding on the GPU and more on the CPU. In Overwatch 2, there is a lot of chaos that can go on from time to time in this game. We still decided to put the settings on ultra preset settings with FSR enabled, and we got anywhere from like 100 to 120 FPS, even in the mass chaos. Valorant, a game that is easy to pretty much run on anything, even a potato, we put all the settings on high, and we were able to get above 200 FPS the entire time, and a lot of the times we were above 220 and somewhere in the 240 range, which is perfect for this FPS game. Next, we tried some AAA titles. In Warzone 2.0, we use the basic preset settings that turns NVIDIA image scaling on. At 1080p, this game got anywhere from like 60 to 80 FPS. It didn't drop to 60 very much, but occasionally it did, and it stayed more in the 80-ish range, 70s to 80s. Apex Legends is also a AAA title, even though some people think it also runs on a potato, but it does not. I used low to medium type settings with this, and we got anywhere from like 90 to 100 FPS. Still very playable, and a pretty fun experience. In the more demanding games like Red Dead Redemption and Cyberpunk 2077, it's not going to be as smooth. You can definitely get above 30 FPS, but getting close to 60 might be a stretch unless you bump the graphic settings all the way down. In games like that, I think 30 to 60 is pretty playable, but that's totally, again, up to you. Now, I listed this computer on Facebook Marketplace for 650 bucks, which is a little high, and I was prepared to be very patient to try to make as much profit as possible. And in typical Facebook fashion, after some haggling back and forth, we agreed on a price of $600, and I threw him a cheap hard drive in there for some extra storage. That's 150 bucks of cold hard cash that I made in profit. So if you're into flipping PCs on a budget, this was a great build and a great option. And if you love this video, then you're absolutely going to love this one as well. Catch you next time.